today I'm going to be teaching you guys how you can create this warp teleportation effect for music videos. Let's go. Today we're going to be breaking down this teleportation warp effect from Lil Tecca's Never Lash Last Number 2 music video. It's a really simple and easy effect to create. All you'll be needing today is After Effects. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into the tutorial. All right, guys, so now that we're inside of After Effects, the first thing that we're going to do is we have this cut right here between our two clips of Tekka in the front and Tekka in the back. And what we're going to do, this is a really, really short, quick effect. Right in between your cut, you're going to go about one, two, three, and let's just do four frames for safe measure. And then I'm going to hit Command Shift D to split that layer and I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side so one two three four for safe measure and command shift D and now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna duplicate these two layers that we made in between so we're gonna hit command D and one more time command D so you should have this like weird looking staircase pattern with two layers in the middle on both sides and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotoscope down just because we're in after effects easier saves time more accurate and it's only about four frames you're gonna grab your roto brush tool and let's go ahead and select layer now real quick if you ever see See this yellow error don't worry it's not the end of the world to fix it all you have to do is go to composition composition settings and basically just change the frame rate to exactly whatever the frame rate says in a yellow error so it says 24 frames and we're actually at like 23.76 or whatever which is like the standard cinema code or whatever something like that and we're gonna do the same thing for the same for the other side so i'm gonna hit composition settings oh yeah sorry i never mind we don't have to do that anymore so now that we've adjusted the composition setting let's just go ahead and adjust this roto brush so i'm just gonna go ahead and select my subject I'm just gonna go ahead and decrease this and let's just draw a very rough roto brush around our figure right here now it doesn't have to be super accurate because it's only a really quick effect and also there's gonna be a lot of motion blur so it's gonna be cleaned up I'm gonna go ahead and speed this portion up and once you're done with your roto brush hit freeze and boom there we go now we have a frozen roto brush layer on our first side let's do the other side And boom, now that we have two rotoscope layers, you can see if I turn off these bottom layers right here, and we have these nice little isolated layers, let's go ahead and add some motion blur to this. So it's time to animate this, the actual like meat of the effect. What I'm gonna do real quick is I'm just gonna go to my effects and presets. I'm gonna search for my transform effect right here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and drag this to our rotoscope layers, drag that there, and then drag that to the other rotoscope layer. If you don't wanna get confused and like messed up, you can just go ahead and select both of your rotoscope layers, and then you can just go ahead and label them so I'm just gonna label these red just so that we know that these layers are our rotoscope layers and now what I'm gonna do is once we have our transform effect applied let's go ahead and animate this thing I'm gonna go ahead and hit a keyframe at the scale and position at the very beginning and also very 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 important tip don't forget to do this uncheck the composition shutter angle and turn up the shutter angle to something like 220 to 360 that's like my sweet spot but you can go ahead and mess around with whatever settings you like and then let's just go ahead and do that for the other same side as well before I forget use composition center angle and uncheck that and turn it up to around 319 now let's go ahead and animate the first clip I'm gonna go ahead and go about pretty much to the end of the clip and I'm gonna scale it up a bit and move it to the left or the position that your next cut is going to be and make sure it's like a pretty good amount because the more that you move it the more that you scale it the more motion blur there's going to be and you can see if we go back between those clips there's like a lot of motion blur now and if we play it out it's a pretty solid animation still a little bit slow so i'm just going to go ahead and tweak it and move it around just till we get a fast animation fyi other tip if you want to make the animation faster without like making it move it farther you could just go ahead and shorten the clipped length as well so i can just go ahead and adjust those transform keyframes and move them even shorter closer together so that we have more movement and now once we have a fast movement animation right there I literally just scaled it up moved it to the left let's go ahead and adjust that other clip so you can see I've moved my first clip in the direction that I want the second clip and now once we animated the first half let's go ahead and animate the second half so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the drop down on our effects drop down and transform I'm gonna hit a keyframe at the scale and position this time at the end of the clip so scale position we're gonna go about one two three frames before and this time we're gonna do the exact opposite so I'm gonna scale it down a little bit and I'm just gonna move it more to the right and a little bit further down as well so we the goal is we want to match it up with the same position that the other clip was so maybe I can move it a little bit more to the left now just so that we have that like same direction and now you can see if we play it out boom we kind of have this continuous motion effect and one thing is you want to make sure the motion blurs match so yep motion blurs pretty matched up and if you want to make it faster of course just move the keyframes together the closer the keyframes are the more 
movement and faster they're gonna feel. So boom, there we go. We have a pretty simple basic effect right there. It looks pretty clean if you ask me in terms of animation. Now let's go ahead and spice this thing up. So two options right here. You can either go ahead and turn on the background layers for the original clip. The only thing is you're gonna go ahead and have to use the content aware fill tool right here. And you're just gonna have to remove the original little Tekka right here in the background. But now we live in an era with AI. So shout out to Photoshop beta or runwayml.com. There's a bunch of different image softwares that you can just go ahead and remove your subject. So right here I have Photoshop beta right loaded up and I'm just gonna go ahead. This is actually not even really an AI tool. I think they have some AI integration with it now, but this is the spot heal healing tool brush, right? Whatever. And I'm just gonna select on that and then I can just go ahead and color over my little Tekka and boom, he's gone. He's disappeared. We have a blank empty shot. I think that's pretty cool. You can even use their AI feature, which you can just draw a box over it and you can just say uh, stuff like remove the figure let's let's see if we can uh we can do that boom and there you go you see ai has automatically generated a empty background i think that's pretty clean if you ask me but yeah let's just go ahead and go with the first one i think that looks pretty cool i'm gonna hit file export export is quick png now fyi if you don't have photoshop beta you can use sites like runwayml.com which is another free artificial generation tool they have similar tools like photoshop beta and other ai image generation content so you can check those out on the link in the description and now that we have our blank shot let's just go ahead and place that right under our rotoscope layers and just trim it down so that it is behind our subjects when they are just like transporting and let's just go ahead and delete those other layers that are in between our red layers so that way we have a nice blank background while Tekka is like teleporting I think that's pretty cool and now you can see if we play this out boom we have this crazy like warp transition effect right here and a blank background I think that's pretty cool if you ask me now let's go ahead and add some finishing touches first off starting off with the warp in the back background which is kind of very minor but it really definitely adds some uh, effect to it so if you don't have sapphire don't worry you can use something called turbulence displace that's one of my favorite effects we're gonna go ahead and drag this to our blank photoshop layer and boom there you go you can see it made everything really trippy but don't worry i'm just gonna go ahead and turn this back down to zero let's go to the end and beginning frames and set keyframes at the amount size complexity offset evolution all those all those at the very beginning and at the very end as well let's do the exact same thing so i can hit the drop down on effect turbulence this place and hit these keyframe buttons in our timeline boom 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 there we go now let's go ahead and add some cool warp in the middle so right between in this like cut i'm just gonna go ahead and turn up the amount a little bit and let's let's turn up the size just a tad bit go ahead and keyframe that make it look nice you can select these keyframes hit keyframe assistant and click easy ease so that we have a nice smoother animation and boom that looks pretty cool if you ask me don't worry we're gonna clean this all up with some camera shake at the end of this effect last but not least i like to add some vr chromatic aberrations to this effect just to make it look and feel cooler so i'm just going to go ahead and apply that to our middle layer then let's keyframe it in the timeline so make sure the aberrations are at keyframed in the very middle so let's keyframe red blue and green and at the very beginning let's just decrease that to zero for everything so zero and zero then let's copy that and paste that to the other side now we have some cool chromatic aberrations in the middle last but not least my final favorite part of this effect is adding some um, camera shake this is what's going to clean the whole effect up this is what really just makes everything look really cool and ties it in all together to create a camera shake we're going to create a new layer we're going to create an adjustment layer and i'm going to make sure this is applied on top of everything else i'm going to go to my effects i'm going to search for a transform key and apply that to our adjustment layer hit the drop down hit the drop down on effects make sure you're on effects and hit the drop down and transform under effect then what we're going to do is on our position keyframe we're going to hold option click on that we're going to get into some expressions right here don't worry if you've never messed with them all i'm going to type is i'm going to type wiggle parentheses and then i'm going to type 10 comma before you finish that go ahead to your effects and search for a slider control and apply that to your adjustment layer as well before the transform sorry i, I forgot to add that part and now right here with the, our position we're going to click on this expression once again and i'm going to pick with this to our slider boom there you go now nothing has happened don't worry all you have to do is come right before the effect starts hit a keyframe on the slider tool go a couple frames into the like heat of the effect and let's turn up the slider value to around like 45 and then go to the very end of the effect and turn it back down to zero and now last but not least unclick use shutter composition angle and turn up that 
motion blur to like 360. Now we play that out, boom, we have some camera shake that we made using expressions and after effect. Highly underrated method to making camera shakes in my opinion. You can just go ahead and increase the slider value to as much as you want, even if you wanna do like 99 and the more camera shake you have. You can see that looks really crazy too. And if you don't like how there's like these black edges on the side, all you can do is just go to the end and hit a keyframe at the scale and then just zoom in a little bit and then go to the middle, zoom in just a tad bit, 110. And then I'm gonna go to the very end again and I'm gonna zoom out to 100. And now boom, we have this cool, really seamless camera warp shake effect. One final touch that they added in the music video, you can do this up to you, is they added some like fire embers at the end, which I think were pretty cool. I downloaded this off of YouTube, uh, it's just like a free overlay. You can just go ahead and drag and drop that, change the blending mode to screen and drag that over the final effect and boom. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, we have a pretty neat camera shake warp effect. One last thing I do wanna shout out, if you don't wanna have to go and make an expression, like every time you wanna do this camera shake thing and after effects and it's just too much time and energy we actually just dropped this preset pack for premiere pro it has about 50 camera shake presets that you can just drag and drop to adjustment layers like this super easy to use i just drag and drop and you can create an effect just like this so here's the effect with the camera shake from our preset pack as you can see pretty insane and we didn't have to make any expressions do nothing it was just all pre-built so if you want to check that out you can get 11percent.net with that here's the final result If you guys made it to the end of the video, I just wanna say thank you again so much for watching. If you managed to find any value or help from this video, please be sure to smash the like button and hit subscribe. It's free, all this content is free, so really, it means the world to me. And once again, if you're interested in copying the Shake It Up V2 preset pack, along with some other cool visual effects presets, to just take your editing game to the next level. You can check them all out at 11percent.net. We have a bunch of crazy presets ranging from title card templates to 3D Chrome overlays. So if it sounds like something you'd be interested in and wanna level up your effects, you can check it all out at 11percent.net. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Leave a comment down below of what effect you'd like to see us break down next, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.